Hi, I'm John Tickles, and welcome to Remote RPGs. As a reviewer of underrated and unknown RPGs, finding these types of games is infinitely more interesting and easy thanks to hacks. Hacked games are so wonderful because there's so many of them out there, and lovers of these games are able to put their creative talents to the fullest, resulting in some awesome experiences that we would never otherwise see, like Pokemon Ash Grey, which follows the anime and video game form. However, there are less desirable uses of this creativity, like this game, where all the Pokemon are women. I die a little each time every time I log onto the internet. Nevertheless, these examples are some of the many Pokemon hacks that are out there, and today we'll be looking at Pokemon Brown, one of the earliest and most interesting hacks out there. What's that, hypothetical viewer? This is just an excuse for me to gush about the original Pokemon in a roundabout way? <laughs> you crafty bastard, you got me. Let's get into the least appealing title for a Pokemon game, Pokemon Brown. Originally released by Cool Boy Man in 2004, Pokemon Brown is a hacked version of Pokemon Red and Blue for the Game Boy, and as such, it is only playable via emulators. I played it on my PSP using a ROM I found back when I first discovered emulation, when I realized that decades of gaming were at my fingertips, and I was more excited than Madonna being touched for the very first time. However, after playing the game on my PSP, then looking for footage for this review, I realized that I was playing a really early version of this hack. Let me elaborate. Pokemon Brown takes place in this whole new region called Rijon. I don't know if that's French. Rijon. But it reuses a lot of elements from the original Pokemon Red and Blue. The version I played was basically Pokemon Red in an all new region with new dialogue, new characters, everything kind of switched around. But I eventually learned that the later versions of Pokemon Brown include Pokemon from newer generations pixelized into Game Boy sprites, new characters, new dialogue, new TMs, new types, new music, new lots of stuff. I played a bit of this newer one and it is sweet. In any case, just keep in mind that a lot of things I say were from me playing the earlier version of the hack, and I don't have footage from that earlier version, so bear with me. Pokemon Brown takes place in the Rijon region, and it follows the basic premise of Pokemon Red and Blue. You start with Charmander or Squirtle and leave Bulbasaur there to die. You go across the world beating the shit out of animals to attain fame and fortune and obedient powerful slaves. However, this game has a somewhat different story. You don't start by entering the basic road to Viridian City. This game starts with a cave. Yeah, caves suck, I know, but it's not that bad here. You don't have to go through a tower in Lavender Town to release ghost spirits. You evade a bunch of missing nose hacking up the tower. And the protagonist talks sometimes. God knows why, because he says nothing useful. In any case, in the early version I played, there was some pretty intense glitchiness going on. The Pokemon professor, not Oak, his name's Tim here, looked like an old professor until he entered his lab, where he turned into a woman. Oh no, this is not one of those games. The spelling and the grammar was also pretty atrocious in the version I played, like, terrible. Not even in the funny, all your bases are belong to us way, just bad. Still, some of the dialogue was humorous, and the fact that these people all had new things to say, for the most part, was pretty fun. In terms of the actual region, there were a lot of neat ideas and design choices. There were a lot of new and cool areas to explore, but the navigation was very difficult. Sometimes Pokemon Brown felt like a Pokemon game we never got but other times there were some areas where it's hard to figure out where to go next or there's just nowhere to heal. At these points I remembered that this was just a hacked game and this kind of took me out of my wonder a bit. People phase through things in this game all the time. This one guy walked on water. Like who the hell does he think he is? Jesus. I think that most of my fun playing this early version of Pokemon Brown was the novelty that it was the first Pokemon hacked I played. 
and I love the original Pokemon. Like, I played it to completion more times than Squall uses ellipses. Because of this, it was pretty fun to play through this uncanny version of Kanto, with tons of interesting new places, the gym leaders being the same order but using different types and having different names, catching Pokemon early in the game that I never expected to see, it was really exciting for me personally. However, I don't think this makes the early version objectively good, but I still had fun. The later versions were a little more objectively better, and I definitely recommend them. In any case, check out my sweet ass Pokemon team. Squirt, the Blastoise, Destroyer of Worlds, your girlfriend, and the Bane of Tiny Escalators. Nine Dicks, the Nine Tails with Nine Tails, but I named him in a juvenile effort to regard said tails as male genitalia. Batman, the Marowak whose parents are dead. He has a bone to pick with your mother. Too Much KFC, the Snorlax who goes to all you can eat buffets and takes it as a personal challenge. Mr. Penis, the Arbok, whose name implies that he is a representation of male genitalia, also amplifying the hilarity when the game says my penis used poison sting. <laughs> and Joe, the Chansey, who I traded for in game and they wouldn't let me change the name. So, Joe, everyone. Truly, this team will shake the heavens and make the gods cower in fear. The graphics in this game were pretty interesting. Much is reused from Pokemon Red and Blue, but the new region still feels fresh and visually interesting. There were also new Pokemon sprites in the early version I played, which were pretty cool. The newer versions of this game have incredibly good graphics for the Game Boy, though. I'm still marveling at how they put a Rhyperion in this kind of Game Boy sprite, it's so cool. The music in the earlier version I played was okay, but it was all stuff I heard before. Wait, am I complaining about Pokemon Red music? Hell, at least it's not Ice JJ Coolfish or whatever the hell his name is. It's something about the girl that just makes my head wanna twirl. In the newer version, yeah, the music was a lot more awesome because of the inclusion of the Johto original soundtrack, and there were even a couple of new songs that were really impressive for a hacked game. In conclusion, my point is, despite the issues I had with the graphics and gameplay, Pokemon Brown was not shit. It was a new Pokemon adventure for me, with old friends in a new region, and I had a blast. I wasn't too interested in playing too much of the new versions of Pokemon Brown, but from what I did play, the current versions of Pokemon Brown are vastly improved, a ton of fun, there's clearly a lot of effort put into them, and it's a great starting point for those looking to get into the Pokemon hacking community, or even for those nostalgic for older Pokemon games who don't want to go back and play the original for the billionth time. I won't tell you how to emulate these games, but if you can find this video, you can figure it out, trust me. You have the power. In any case, if this game sounds interesting, then definitely check it out. I'm John Tickles, and I look forward to our next random encounter.